Hi again. This chapter we're going to talk about the key components that make XR devices and XR experiences. Um, Eduardo, why don't you tell us about what perception technologies are uh, and why they are so important for XR? Perception is, is a very fundamental uh, technology for XR experience. So it's the ability for the wearable devices to infer the self presence in the environment and also infer the the environment itself, right, to have an understanding what they, it's around the user. What are the key components, the enablers that make self-perception uh, and what are you guys working on? So the, the wearable devices, they have, uh, they have to have an ability to, uh, first of and for, and most important, recognize where the head position is with respect to the environment, right? So when, the, when I move my head, when I look at a different direction in the, in the space, I need to have a, a precise a notion what that direction is and the location of the head of the user is so that when I project things on the screen I have a, a realistic sense of where things are so when I move my head things stay stationary they don't move together with my head because otherwise people feel sick about that experience right you raise a, a point that is being uh, uh, coming from many many consumers no? that uh, when they they've tried VR headsets and so on, they, they got dizzy. So it's really, um, you know, a, a fundamental physiological aspect, right? So when, for example, when people are in, in a boat and the boat starts swinging left and right, people feel dizzy. So when, when you're seeing a virtual, you're in a virtual environment, whether it's VR or an augmented reality where, where we have virtual objects, things have to stay stationary. They can't move with the head because it feels like we're in a boat if they move with the head. So some studies have shown that if, if that latency or that delay between moving your head and, 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 and staying and seeing the, the, the object stationary, if, if that uh, delay is less than 20 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. Yes, then, then most people won't feel any effect, right? So that's the challenge, is to actually process all that uh, sensor data, all the cameras that we have on those glasses, the inertial sensors, the infrared sensor, all that information. We have to process in, in near real time so that we can detect the presence of the head in the right way and then we can compensate for whatever we are rendering on the display in a, in a very fast way so that users don't have that notion of delay. What about uh, other uh, enablers in self-perception? What, what can you tell us about hand tracking? Then you have to start thinking about, okay, now I, I, now I know where my head is, but how about the rest of my body? And hands are a very important aspect of it because it's a more natural way for you to interface with things, right? So if I'm, if I'm in a virtual environment or in an augmented environment, mixed reality environment, I, I want to project certain things in the, in the, in the environment and I, may, I want to interact with it. I want to be able to, to recognize the position of my hand, gestures, so I may be able to grab things, I may be able to pinch uh, and scale certain things so I can look into that in more detail. I can maybe do a swipe and I can flip pages or I can, can move objects from one side to another. So having, again, the glass be able to automatically uh, recognize, have the smarts, the, you know, the intelligence to recognize where the hand is and what the hand movements are, the gestures are, it's a very fundamental self-perception. What about eye tracking? Uh, some of the latest products uh, bring this kind of advancement. So we have sensors looking outwards and then we have sensors also looking inwards, right? So eye tracking is a very important one. So we would like to see where, you know, understand where the user is looking at and because that would allow us to, for example, um, render the image with higher quality in those regions. And, and that's a very uh, a good way to optimize the entire rendering process. And there are other things you can do with eye tracking in terms of kind of uh, trying to guide the user from different areas of the virtual experience and so on. Also for self-expression uh, um, no? with avatars. Absolutely. As we can infer um, facial gestures, facial expressions. We talk about self-expression and self-perception. So what about, what is important to, to, to track and to understand about the environment? I'm going to interact with the environment, right? So I need to, and I will augment the real environment or I will be in a fully immersed virtual reality environment. In either case, I need to understand what I am, right? In that experience. So I need to understand, for example, that there are chairs in front of me 
and objects and, and even moving objects like animals crossing my path. It may, if uh, in a virtual environment, for example, uh, I want to make sure the user is protected, right? From it is in a safe environment, the guardian space is protected. You need to understand where is that safe environment is and someone or an animal crosses that environment then the user can be alerted. So that is all about perce perceiving the environment and it has to be done in very real time. The lighting is, is, is critical as well, right? Absolutely. It's because one of the most challenging. Yeah, this uh, is one of the challenging aspects of perception is to actually infer where the natural lighting conditions uh, are in, in, in the environment so that I can translate that into whatever I'm, I'm rendering from a virtual perspective so that I can make it very realistic, otherwise it will look cartoonish. All of this uh, information that is captured and so on that requires high computational uh, Absolutely. requirements, right? And that's a big challenge, right? So if you think about it, the wearable de devices are really small, they don't have a very large battery, so the amount of computation that you can put on those glasses is, is limited, but a lot of that computation needs to happen on the glass because, because of that um, that delay, that latency that I mentioned earlier, you have to react really fast and you have to display it in real time, any changes in the environment, and so otherwise people will perceive that as not natural uh, interaction. So we have to be really efficient about how you do the computation and split the computation between the glasses and, and, a, and, a, and another device, like a smartphone, for example, it's a companion device. And and all these algorithms, they are heavily based on uh, artificial intelligence and computational um, uh, visual processing. And we have to take all that and process it very fast. But there are so, some aspects of perception that are uh, less, um, let's say, uh, uh, time critical. You know, then they can also, that aspect can be done in the cloud, in the right? Cloud, yep. And then you have connectivity through 5G and so on that would allow us to kind of have access to that. Great, thank you Eduardo for explaining all of this fascinating uh, technological advancements. And uh, thanks to Qualcomm anyway for, for joining this video. Right, thank you. Thanks for having me. Now we're going to deep dive into the components that make a great product like the Pico 4. And to talk about it, no better person than Lilan. Lilan, hi. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Um, we are going to start with a quick review of the outside of the case of the headset, uh, looking at the camera technology. So if you want to pick up the, that's the inter internal part. So that's a 16 megapixel camera that you can see here on the front. That's merged with the four camera tracking sensors. So in combined, you have five cameras. And what happens when you put on the headset is you're actually able to look at objects in the real world with the level of detail like you would see on your watch face. So you can actually be wearing the headset, read the time, your kids run by, your dog runs by. You can interact with the real world and the virtual, sw switching between them seamlessly. So this makes the see-through technology happen, right? Like with all these Yeah, so cameras. that's the heart of the pass-through video. That's where, that's why this is one of the world's first mixed reality headsets. So it's not a, only a VR headset, it does both VR and mixed reality. Let's talk about the brain of the, of the device. Can you, what can you tell me about the processor? Sure, so this is a Qualcomm XR2. This is uh, based on a family of processors that many people have in their smartphones. Uh, the big difference between the XR2 that we have here and what you would find in your, in your smartphone is that we're able to do a ton of active cooling with this fan. And with that, you're able to get peak performance uh, from the processor. Let, let's talk about the pancake uh, lenses. The lens are on a track and they can actually be adjusted using a mechanical system to fit the IPD, which is the distance between your eyes. And then within the pancake, you have two key uh, components. So one is the LCD, the micro display. This is obviously much, much smaller than what you would find in your uh, typical cell phone, which is the type of display that VR headsets have been using up until this point. And then the second thing is the uh, pancake optics. So, and if you take a look, you can basically, it's like a super magnifying glass. So you have this, incredibly high density pixel display, and then you've got this incredibly advanced uh, magnifying glass, and when you put the two together, you've, you've never seen a clearer 
more bright, vibrant VR headset in your life. So this is a state-of-the-art optics, and, and it's hard for anyone to tell from the video, but it's incredibly light. So all of the components are also selected based on their size, but also their weight. So everything in the headset, you know, the front of the headset's less than 300 grams. But uh, you have in the back of the headset the battery. Exactly. The weight distribution of the headset is incredibly neutral, and the battery has two uh, battery banks with the battery processor here. This is what actually controls uh, how much juice the product is using. And the reason it's at the back is to give you that counterbalance. So in total, this battery plus these optics plus this processor running at full speed, you're looking at about an hour, hour and a half of uh, life. You can get up to two hours if you're willing to reduce the volume and reduce the brightness. Brilliant. So this is today's technology. What are you guys working on for the next step? So working from the easiest, uh, the stuff that's very clear on our roadmaps. So things like camera technology, really a huge improvement can happen in the processing units. So working with our partners like Qualcomm, we already can see what their roadmap looks like. They're working on the XR2 Gen 2. Um, this cooling assembly can also be further refined so you can get more performance in a standalone device. The optics also, you can make uh, further improvements to the type of lens that you manufacture and you can increase the pixel density and the size of the, of the display. So you can miniaturize this, which is great. I mean, unfortunately for all of us and where we are as a, as a technology and as a society, the main component that's the hardest to see huge improvements in performance is the battery. Thank you very much, Lilan. It's uh, fascinating, and uh, we look forward to see the next if, generation. And if I can just tell you quickly about this oh. super tiny quality of life improvement, but the controllers have been designed to be able to handle the most stressful uh, gameplay sessions possible. So you're never going to have, because of this cute little compartment that we designed, never going to have a controller disconnect on you when you play games. Sorry, that's my one of my pet peeves, and I just wanted to make sure we got that in there. No worries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lilan. Yeah.